How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another video and in today's video we're going to be looking at this new uh, newly announced 2023 Ferrari Daytona SP3. Now before we get into today's video like always definitely be sure to leave, leave a like down below subscribe and also turn on post notifications by clicking that little bell icon down there it helps me out a ton and i know i've said this in previous videos but more than like 98 percent of you guys that watch my videos actually aren't subscribed so it would really help me out a ton if you were to just go down there and subscribe it's absolutely free and as again a smaller creator it really means the world to me but anyways getting all that out of the way i don't want to waste any more of your guys times uh today we're going to be looking at this new day Daytona SB3 and it is actually uh, pretty amazing. I have to give credit where credit's due and Ferrari uh, really made an exceptional vehicle with this new Daytona. I know that I am typically more biased to Lamborghini when it comes to the whole Ferrari versus Lamborghini debate. Uh, if you've been subscribed to my channel, you might have noticed that in the past with some of my videos. But Ferrari is taking a very different approach with this new Daytona, uh, and they're not really like resurrecting old cars like Lamborghini is doing with like the new Countach, I guess you could say. But instead, with Ferrari's new Icona series, which was originally the uh, Monza SP1, and now the, um, the Monza SP2, and now this Daytona SP3. They're actually kind of paying homage to uh, Ferrari's old days and you know the 60s and just classic Ferrari cars by making new kind of iterations of them, but not just solely reviving uh, old cars, if that makes any sense. So they're combining your old style of vehicles uh, with just modern technology and the products have just been absolutely outstanding. Now I do have some stuff listed about the new Daytona SP3 uh, right in front of me so if I'm looking back and forth please excuse that but this new uh, SP3 is going to be limited to 599 units or so just under 600 uh, and it's already sold out so even if you wanted one and you are in the you know top 1% of the 1% that can afford a car like this uh, you can't even get it anymore because all the units are already sold in advance of actually production so that's kind of crazy and they're going for right around 2.2 million US dollars or 2 million uh, British pounds. Also probably the best thing about this new Daytona SB3 is that it's powered by a six and a half liter V12 and actually the same naturally aspirated V12 that is found in the Ferrari 812 Superfast. Except the one that's going to be found in this new Daytona SP3 actually does have upgraded and more forged internals, making it actually the uh, most powerful production engine that's going to be going in a car from Ferrari uh, to this date. It's going to be making 828 brake horsepower. Also the V12 in this Daytona SP3 has a red line at 9500 RPMs, which that uh, naturally aspirated V12 uh, at that high of an RPM, uh, that's got to sound just absolutely breathtaking. Now, as far as uh, performance is concerned, Ferrari is claiming that this new Daytona SB3 can do zero to 62 miles per hour or zero to 100 kilometers in 2.8 seconds flat and apparently have a top speed of 211 miles per hour, which is pretty jaw dropping performance as well. Now moving on from some of those basic specs that I talked about this uh, new Daytona SP3, now we're actually going to be uh, talking about the design of this and looking at some of the pictures of this new Ferrari. And I do have to say, in my own opinion, uh, from what I've seen of these pictures, uh, it does look like this car is going to be one of, if not the best looking car that Ferrari has manufactured in the past 10 years at least. And uh, looking at this first picture here, uh, and these are actually off of Top Gear's uh, website, so I will be leaving a link, link to this uh, photo album down in the description below. But you can tell right off the bat that this car really combines the curves of the 60s and the high arcing uh, fenders and also modern 2020s arrow. You see some of like the side canards right under the headlights right here. Nice big aggressive splitter and a couple other jaggedy lines right here that really break up some of those uh, flowing curves that are more of a characteristic of cars from you know the 60s, 70s, that era. And now also another note is that all of the Icona series cars are being hand built, 100% hand built. Uh, so that's another thing that definitely adds to those cars value being you know at over 2 million US dollars. But looking at the rear here, uh, this is where we see 
probably the most, I guess, modern feel from it. Uh, whereas in the front, you know, it definitely looks more of like a retro classic. You can definitely get more of those like 60s vibes, I guess you could say. Whereas in the rear, it just looks like an absolute spaceship. I, I guess you can kind of have these like rear louver vent things, uh, equating them to like Ferrari's heritage with the Testarossa a, a little bit, uh, because the Testarossa kind of has that design feature on its rear, but still, I just think it looks very, very uh, modern in the rear. You still have those high arcing uh, rear fenders uh, in the back there, but still, it's just absolutely amazing. And in the interior, uh, we have like kind of connected uh, two bucket seats, which I am a huge fan of. I love the fact that uh, this car actually has dedicated racing bucket seats, uh, much like the uh, both the Monzas. I think that you know that definitely pays homage to the racing heritage, and also a car like this is not meant to be comfortable. I'm sorry, but uh, even if you're paying over two million dollars for something like this, it's a special car. It means a lot to Ferrari's brand and their history, so they're not just gonna, you know, throw in really comfortable seats in there. Although it does look like they're made of a really good uh, quality of suede, I guess, interior, but still, it's probably not the best to take a, a six hour road trip in. And here's the car actually in motion, again, looking just absolutely breathtaking. I also really love how the taillight kind of just flows right across. I guess this little break in the middle, like that might be a third brake light, uh, but still, I just love how it just flows. And then they, those flows are also contrasted with uh, this, uh, again, the sharp, jagged kind of lines in both the front and the rear. Now moving on to the wheels, a uh, pretty bland wheel design to be honest with you, uh, but the wheels are going to be a staggered setup. So we're gonna have 20 inch wheels in the front with 21 inch wheels in the rear. These wheels are gonna be wrapped in Pirelli P0 Corsa tires. The front being 265 by 30s, whereas in the rear, we're definitely gonna have a decent amount of uh, meat with the rear tires being 340 45 by 30s uh, so yeah there's definitely a decent amount of, of uh, rubber back there but this car is probably gonna need it with its almost 900 horsepower and the fact that it is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive car it's not going to be all-wheel drive and also I know I mentioned it before but this naturally aspirated v12 is not going to have any electric or hybrid funny business going on so there's it's just going to be powered by that single v12 engine so uh, this car is certainly like a purist's dream i would have to say and if you're a big fan of ferrari i would have to say that you're probably very happy even though again 99 percent of us couldn't afford something as uh, ridiculously priced as this you're definitely probably happy that Ferrari is uh, again paying homage to their heritage, paying homage to their history, and coming out with an amazing vehicles such as this one. But that's pretty much just going to be it. Again, I'll leave a link uh, to this whole photo album down in this description below. So if you want to check out all the different photos that Top Gear took of this new Daytona SB3, uh, be my guest. But while you're here, definitely leave your thoughts and opinions on this new crazy Ferrari down in the comment section below. I would love to hear you guys. And also let me know. Uh, how you think this concept of the Icona series stacks up to, uh, you know, Lamborghini uh, remaking the Countach? Whether you think the La that Lamborghini's take on it is better, just reviving the old name, or do you think that Ferrari is doing a better job, kind of reviving the spirit of their old cars in kind of newer, uh, different named uh, models? I guess you could say. But again, definitely be sure to leave a like, subscribe all that stuff down below. Turn on the post notifications with that little bell icon. But like always, thank you guys so much for all the continued support and I'll see you in the next one.